what's going on today youtube just going to be talking about more things i've been working on with chatterbox and uh yeah we're in the code base right now and i just want to get my thoughts out before the week is over as i'm going to be gone for the weekend so um yesterday i was working through a few things so if you are keeping up with what i'm doing um chatterbox a state-of-the-art text-to-speech model um was released but there's no official fine-tuning training code a guy has released some training code and I've been working with it to get uh, chatterbox trained in other languages uh, so I have Japanese working um, with English and so I'm gonna talk a little bit about that um, that journey to get here and what I did to accomplish that testing out how this sounds using two languages so um, I actually ended up ruining my English Japanese run um, by switching up midway and allowing for katakana characters to be uh, present, but that's just a Japanese quirk. I have figured out how you can train multiple languages into Chatterbox, so that is pretty cool. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Right now, I kind of just started a new run right now to um, get the model trained for Japanese English um, because uh, the previous run I, I messed up on and I don't have a previous checkpoint so that's that but um, first things first what did I do well I needed a tokenizer I needed to change the tokenizer that comes with chatterbox if we look at the tokenizer uh, we have mainly English or almost all English here so in order to um, use Japanese I need to increase the uh, what is it the tokens that are inside of the chatterbox tokenizer in order to tokenize it into uh, tokens that chatterbox can understand so the reason that we do the tokenization process is so that the chatterbox um, text model can kind of understand better how speech is represented and then for each token that we train um, it stores a certain value inside of the weights to kind of model how maybe that token is going to sound in uh, whatever sentence you feed it so um, to do that we need a tokenizer so I needed to lengthen the tokenizer to include Japanese characters so here I have a bunch of hiragana inside of here and the style of tokenizer that we are using is BPE, so something that I'm fairly familiar with due to Tortoise. So um, a lot of the implementation stuff here, uh, I used a bunch of previous knowledge from Tortoise, which made my life quite a bit easier. And I'm very much glad um, that I had done that before because, yeah, all of the stuff that's been done in here is what I did with Tortoise. But same process. So make the tokenizer longer, add additional tokens for Japanese um, in order to get the BPE tokenizer uh, I had to do a few things before that so I am currently training on the Amelia data set and so the Amelia data set consists of a bunch of um, let's say text files that include uh, the text for Japanese or the text transcriptions for Japanese audio and so I just aggregate all of those text files and all of those transcriptions throw it into one single file which we have here um, actually we have here if it'll yeah, yeah which we have here so you can see we've got a bunch of Japanese characters in here and we've got these little symbols in here which are kanji so to train Japanese for text-to-speech you normally want to normalize it to kana and so in this case I'm normalizing it to hiragana so here we go um, still a bunch of symbols if you can't read Japanese um, but uh, no kanji so normalize Japanese to hiragana and then what we can do is just train a new tokenizer so um, I have this script here that'll train a 500 uh, vocab uh, length tokenizer for the um, large text file of Japanese transcripts and that outputs this here so we've got our own Japanese uh, BPE tokenizer um, now if we look at the previous one uh, the previous one is a thousand characters long um, which we have here so we've got a thousand characters um, and the one that I have with the uh, 500 Japanese characters only 500 long so what I need to do is merge this tokenizer with the base chatterbox um, tokenizer so this is the base chatterbox tokenizer ends at 703 um, and then this is the uh, 
Man, I hate how these things close on. Okay, so this one ends at 499, 500, and this one ends at 703, aka 704. So what I need to do is merge these together. And so what I can simply just do is um, take the first number here, which is zero, and then just convert this to 705. The next one do 706, 707, 708, so on and so forth, and just change the index values for all of those tokens, and then just copy them into this uh, tokenizer here and placing it after the 703, which gives me this um, tokenizer right here. So if we go to that 703, that's all I'm doing, just doing 704, 705, 706. Um, and then just making sure to exclude anything that's overlapping. So the special tokens here, we don't consider the special tokens. So we actually start from this one here, which is this little triangle. And so you can see that is at 704 and we just continue doing it in sequence. So that is how I just made the um, Japanese English tokenizer uh, merge here. There are some things to consider. For example, if you have two tokens inside of a BPE tokenizer that share the same number for the same key, um, you run into issues. So the, um, what is it? The script that I actually use to make the tokenizer um, takes into account um, a existing tokenizer to make sure none of that overlaps. So um, basically what that allows me to do is make sure that there's no duplicate tokens inside of the BPE tokenizer. And then once we have that, we can train on it. And um, generally, uh, we are good to go. However, there are a few considerations um, or something, some modifications to the Chatterbox uh, text model that actually needs to be done in order to accomplish that. And that is to make the text embeddings um, longer. If we don't change the text embeddings or the, like, the text weights, uh, what we end up doing or what we end up getting is a size mismatch, a mismatch for the um, the weights and the tensors that are being trained inside of the model. And so what we need to do is we need to extend them. So we've got a little script here that is able to extend the um, specific uh, weights um, tables that we need to uh, make longer. So we take the original one, which is 704 um, vocab tokens in length and extend it to, in this case, an arbitrary number, which I just extended it to 2000. And so, um, yeah, we've got all of these um, parameters in here that we could feed in new text, to new text vocab size. So I made it 2000. So once you have a um, T3 model or the text model for Chatterbox um, extended for uh, with additional tokens, that's where we get something like this. It's just a larger version of uh, the T3 model. So T3 CFG 2000. And then we just need to modify the um, the Chatterbox configuration. So if we go into T3 configs, I just change this value from 704 to 2000. And so this allows us to train on a larger uh, or it allows us to train with a larger text embedding um, table or weights or whatever uh, you want to call it and allows it to learn um, new representations for the tokens that we added to the BPE tokenizer. So that is a that. That's how you can add tokens into the T3 model, the text model for Chatterbox. The second thing is how do we maintain the existing um, tokens so that those tokens don't get messed up during training or anything like that. And so to do that, um, we need to change how the model trains and saves weights. And we go into our fine tuning script here. Where is it at? We've got fine tune T3 beam here. So we go into our fine tuning script here and we just freeze a certain amount of text embeddings so that they don't get trained during uh, the training process. So this is the approach that I'm going with right now. Um, so what we do here is that we just freeze the first 704 tokens inside of the text embeddings that we are, um, we are training. So 
basically uh, we're zeroing them out so we're not doing any type of um, writing to those weights and we pretty much preserve and freeze these values um, during training so that when we inference on them um, we get a mixture of well we are able to use English and Japanese so I'm going to just inference on this sample here which is English this model right here that I have I kind of this is the messed up model that I was talking about earlier um, where I messed it up with katakana um, so it'll output English out just fine but for Japanese it's kind of screwed up which is unfortunate but uh, that's why I'm training a new model right now with that knowledge on hand so here it is generating and so we'll take a, a quick listen to this output so here it is Ezreal and Jinx teamed up with Ari, Yasuo, and Timo to take down the enemy's nexus in an epic late-game pentakill. So, there we go. That sounds very Chatterbox-like. So, completely, um, it's still able to speak English perfectly fine. Uh, no accent with it. Um, and so, I guess this approach, because I am freezing those English tokens, um, could be damaged a little bit. Uh, if uh, I need to maybe train an accent into there. But because Japanese is a completely different language and uses a completely different script, I can just freeze all of those tokens. Um, there are a few things that I need to worry about, but I'll talk about that after we listen to this sample here. So here is the English-Japanese mix. Testing out how this sounds using two languages. Yazuno no kono hatsu no hanto more to sanku no sotsu no more to <laughs> so there you go it's just a bunch of weird gibberish and um it, it does switch into japanese and it was working earlier but i don't have uh, one of those working models saved unfortunately to, to show you guys um actually on my youtube channel let's just go into here um i actually shared a uh a voice sample so here we go let's take a listen to this Testing out how this sounds using two languages. So that is much more comprehensible. Um, and uh, yeah, that's how the model sounded before. And that wasn't a very and that was a very undertrained Japanese model as well. Um, but uh, we are currently running a new one so that we can get the language a little bit better. So the consideration that I was talking about a little bit earlier before these um, was that there is an issue if maybe I need to train a language that overlaps with some of the tokens that I have frozen. Um, so I don't know exactly how I would accomplish that uh, for this case um because we have like let's for let's say for example i wanted to maybe train um like german or something like that it overlaps with a bunch of these characters and so i would need to because i want to know how german sounds with some of these characters i would need to unfreeze these tokens so that they could be trained now i don't know how that would work how i would do that uh, dynamically I feel like um, at this point, I would need to have an English data set as well that I'm training with so that it doesn't forget how to speak English. That's the only other, that's the only solution that I could think of um, to uh, enable or to not freeze these um, weights and then train on German. Or I don't know. I don't know if there's some type of um, thing that could be applied over maybe like a Laura, but I don't know how all of that stuff works uh, for training with the uh, chatterbox so don't know if that would be even possible but yeah that's just one consideration that would have to be taken into account uh, with maybe training a language that overlaps with some of the characters or some of the scripts that are being used here um, and well for Japanese it doesn't really matter at all because the script is completely different um, compared to English so yeah, that is pretty much just me talking about everything that I've done so far to get this uh, Chatterbox T3 model extended and trained on in, in Japanese. It does in fact work um, and uh, I should hopefully be coming out with a um, maybe like a tutorial on how you could fine tune this um, by next week because this 
I'm unfortunately going to run out of time this week to record anything for that. And so, yeah, that's why I'm just kind of doing a summary video here because uh, I still have to make all of my code look nice for me and uh, make sure that it's it's readable and, and whatnot. But, um, yeah, another thing that I wanted to mention is I am running all of this with Beam Cloud and Beam Cloud has been very awesome in my implementation um, to be able to just simply run training. Uh, from the Python code here without needing to make any type of container online or anything like that. So I can simply just make a decorator here, call to Beam Cloud to run this as a function, and it's running training. And so um, I could easily just run this running locally uh, as I can running it remotely, which is pretty fantastic. Um, I am uh, working with them right now, but. Uh, they reached out and uh, I find their service is pretty awesome. So I'll be having a video on that sometime in the future um, so that you guys could check it out and use it if you find it useful for maybe stuff that you're building or if you just want to use it for inference, you can totally do that too. But um, anything else I want to go over? I don't think so. Um, I think that's everything that I have pretty much done over these past, uh, over this past day or two, uh, just to get this model going. Um, I guess I will mention real quick why the model failed uh, when I restarted training with what I call katakana or what's called katakana. It's because the um, the conversion library that I'm using, Pi Kakasi, is messing up with some of the conversion between like katakana to katakana so it um what we have here is good day what it ends up doing is it ends up uh duplicating this day here and outputs it as good day day and so it just messes up the flow of 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 these sentences and and yeah makes the tokenization um not as good and uh so we're just foregoing katakana. I guess we don't need it. And we're just going all hiragana. But um, yeah, that's really it. And um, well, that's going to be it. So if you're a member of the channel, very much appreciate it. Thank you, guys. I will be releasing some of these models, I think, for my members only. So um, yeah, that is probably what I'll be doing. I did upload my toy Japanese model uh, for those of you out there that want to try just Japanese. But for these future ones, I might just be releasing it to members only. We'll see. But uh, I'll make that as an announcement for a future one or a future video. But other than that, see you guys later. And uh, 